Hello and welcome to this Sunday's virtual service on the 26th of April 2020. I'm Celia Cartwright, I'm now retired from ministry and I was booked to come to Chowbent today to take the first of several services over the next couple of months. It seemed right, therefore, even in the lockdown, to bring a service to you. And I'm most grateful for the opportunity to be with you and look forward to the day that I do come back in person. It's been a strange few weeks and I'm sure there will be many more strange weeks before a new and calmer normal becomes ordinary. And we all need something beyond the box sets on TV or games or jigsaws or knitting or crochet, woodwork, car maintenance, daily walks and cycle rides, painting fences and gardening. We need other people. That goes with the human condition. Even for introverts like me, who are quite happy to find lots to do in my isolation. And we all need a deeper connection with one another. And also a place in which to settle and be silent and find the peace and the grace of holiness. Where we can listen for that still small voice. The echo in our wilderness that comforts and heals. So for the next 25 minutes or so, let us be connected here. In spirit, if not in body, as one whole. In that heart centre into which we may enter whenever we like. Wherever we are and whenever we need to or want to. If you have your own chalice to light during this shared time, I ask you to take it up now. And in this sacred space that we have created with our love, let us light a candle, a flame of hope. And let the light be for those we cannot be with just now, and may they be blessed. And for those who are working to keep the world turning and its people fed and watered, may they be blessed. And for those who are ill at home or in hospital, may they be blessed. For those who are alone and unnoticed by neighbours, may they be blessed. And may they be noticed. For those who care for sick and those who cannot look after themselves, may they also be blessed. For those that we have lost in this crisis and for those we will lose before it ends, may they be blessed. And for ourselves who wait in isolation, not knowing how long it may be until it is safe for us to mingle with others. May we be blessed. Amen. I'd like to invite you now to share, to join together in the fellowship of prayer. As we sit in our homes quietly, let us be aware of our connections to people, not here in the room with us, but here in spirit, together, connected by the spirit of God, the spirit of life, and at this time of trial and fear and isolation and danger, let us pray to the God who holds us in the hollow of his hands, to the God who holds us in the curve of her arms the God whose flesh is the flesh of hills and hummingbirds and earthworms, whose colour is the colour of an old black woman and a young white man and the colour of the leopard and the grizzly bear and the green grass snake, whose hair is like the aurora borealis, rainbows, nebulae, waterfalls and a spider's web whose eyes sometimes shine like the evening star and then like the fireflies and then again like an open wound. 
whose touch is both the touch of life and the touch of death and whose name is every bonds. And what shall we pray? Let us say thank you. And for those who would wish to, let us say together the prayer that Jesus taught. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those that trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever. Amen. For our reading, I'd like to share with you a little paragraph from chapter 5 of John O'Donoghue's wonderful book, Benedictus, in which he writes, The human body is an amazing masterpiece. With the senses we see, hear, taste, smell and touch the world, drawing its mystery inside us. With the mind we probe the eternal structures of things. With the face we present ourselves to the world and recognise each other. But it is the heart that makes us human. The heart is where the beauty of the human spirit comes alive. Without the heart, the human would be sinister. To be able to feel is a great gift. When you feel for someone, you become united with that person in an intimate way. Your concern and compassion come alive, drawing some of the other person's world and spirit into yours. Without the ability to feel, friendship and love could never be born. All feeling is born of the heart. This makes the heart, the human heart, the jewel of the world. John O'Donoghue talks of the human heart as the jewel of the world, the feeling organ, we might say. I wonder how you've been feeling in these last weeks during the isolation of lockdown. I have a son and a daughter who look after people, so they are still working. My son in a nursing home where currently there are no COVID-19 patients and my daughter in a hospital where she is looking after several people with COVID-19 and where even with PPE, many nurses are still catching the virus. I've lost two friends to the virus and conducted one funeral this week. So all in all, I have been feeling a bit worried and sad. I bet you too have your worries. Few of us are without them, whether it's health, isolation, work or lack of work, or getting medicines and food. There has been much to trouble us. But through these worries, there have been things to be grateful for. The phone call from a friend, the daily and weekly prayers and worship services that have been available to access on computers, tablets and smartphones. There have been programmes and films available to watch on television and theatre companies streaming plays for free. Kind people going out to check on those who might not be managing without help. 
The weather has been remarkably kind to us, allowing fresh air to be available through windows, on walks, in gardens and on balconies. We have seen the atmosphere clear. The stars become brighter than many of us can remember. Wild creatures have come out of hiding and ventured into our streets. You can hear birdsong. And we can hear the silence of the world that is in reality full of noise, of life. Things to be grateful for. I hope we remember these when the world crawls out from under the threat of this virus. I heard a story the other day, it's called The Tenth Apple, I'd, I'd love to share it with you. One day, a hunter went into the forest to follow the trail of a small animal he decided to hunt. He followed the trail for many, many hours and then lost it. It was then that he realised he wasn't sure how to get out of the forest, which was, I have to tell you, vast. He walked and walked, but was completely lost. By the third day, he felt he would die, for he had found no food and no water. But just then he saw a miracle. Just in the distance, an apple tree, its branches drooping and heavy with apples ripe for the picking. The young hunter collected as many apples as he could carry to keep him fed and watered while he searched for a way home. That first apple, oh, it tasted so wonderfully fresh on his tongue. He thought to himself that this is what manna must have tasted like to the Israelites fleeing the Egyptian forces. He savoured every mouthful and sucked the core till there was nothing left but stalk and pips. And happy, he set off on his search for home. The second apple wasn't quite as good as the first, but it was still good. The third apple was okay. By the time the hunter had got to the tenth apple, he found it tasteless and he threw half of it away. He had reached that tenth apple situation, where with an abundance of apples in his pockets and bag, he started to take them for granted. There is so much in our world that we take for granted. And that instinct has been used by manufacturers to sell us more and more. We even take the air that we breathe for granted. Just recently, a 79-year-old man in Italy recovered from the coronavirus and on leaving the hospital, he was presented with his bill. One of the items was for €5,000. The man broke down in tears. The €5,000 was for a day on, an, in on a, an inhaler. Staff tried to comfort him, telling them that there were ways to pay that he... They, were, they wouldn't leave him destitute if that was his worry. But the man shook his head and through his tears he said that for 79 years he had been breathing God's air for free and never ever thought to say thank you and that he would never take it for granted again. We can take things for granted in our world, so many things. The sight of flowers in the hedgerow, the green of grass, the water in our lakes, our rivers, our streams and in our taps. The sky above us, the stars at night, the warmth of central heating, the roof over our heads, the people that we love. In this strange time, we are being reminded of the things we cannot do that before we took for granted. A drink with friends the company of our family, the ability of our NHS to cope with whatever we asked it to, without considering the compassion and determination of the staff that keep it working. The cleaner, that quiet, invisible cleaner, keeping offices and shops and hospitals clean every day, 
the dustbin men who whisk our rubbish away so we don't have to think about it. The air that we breathe. The theologian and mystic Meister Eckhart, who lived through the last years of the 13th century and into the 14th, wrote, Thank you. If the only prayer you ever say in your life is thank you, that will suffice. Gratitude is infinite, and when we express our appreciation, we are, by definition, offering a prayer. Gratitude is infinite, and we need to get into the habit of gratitude. So many people seem to live in our world filled with dissatisfaction, when judgment is the response to most things. Trolls on Twitter, trolls on Facebook, the tabloid media headlines, all about judgment. The unpleasant note left on a car or an ambulance windscreen, and mostly without caring about the person or the people being judged. Is it that no one feels appreciated so they try to pull another person down just to feel better about themselves? Or do we take our freedoms so much for granted that we forget that there is worth and dignity in all people? Maybe it's time to put gratitude to use. Be grateful for small acts of kindness. Don't take things for granted. Spread cheer, not gloom. I have a habit of responding to that very British, oh, isn't this an awful day, every time it rains or it's cold or it's windy or all three, with, oh, I don't know, the weather's not so good, but my day's been okay. And inevitably, this makes people look twice at what they said. And most people agree. I'm right. We all go away feeling better. Just being grateful a day for a day that might be wet and cold and windy, but a day that otherwise is just fine. I'm always grateful for just fine. It means my world is on an even keel, that those I love are all right. I like doing exciting things, but not all the time. If I did them all the time, they wouldn't be exciting. I take them for granted. I would reach 10th apple time. I have for years now kept a daily diary, just a few notes at the end of the day, mostly a litany of ordinary things I've done. A few are about feeling unwell or unhappy or just one of those days when nothing seems to go right. But I inevitably try to find at least one good thing about my day. During the lockdown, I have been writing a daily rumination on Facebook that many people seem to like reading. And for that, I am also grateful. It's good to know I'm being useful, even just a little bit. And if I'm honest, it's always nice to know you have been connected with someone else who's read or seen those things that we put on. It even brought a response from someone that I have not seen for nearly 15 years who lives in Oregon. Connections. Connections are so good. And for that, I'm grateful too. What are you grateful for today, this week, in your life? If you feel like it, after this is finished, why not sit with your chalice, still lit, and let the things for which you are grateful for wander through your mind. Write them down if you want to. And then do the same tomorrow. And tomorrow. And tomorrow. And say thank you. And know your prayer is good. Go to that heart centre. And use all your senses. And feel the gratitude warm your being. Amen. We are coming to the end of this service for today. 
And as we slip into week five of our lockdown, may we, be, may we be reminded that we are part and participants of the universe. And let us go forth from the quiet of this time together, encouraged to strive for, towards faithfulness to the best in ourselves, in others and in all creation. Amen. Stay safe. See you soon.